with the current modern quantum physics interpretation of electrons or photons being both a particle or a wave. And they are demonstrated as such artistically as particles and waves. And I want to elaborate a little bit on this for you. In elaborating on these tarot quantum physics cards, I want you to pay particular attention to how interestingly oriented the meanings of the symbols can be to the gospel as well as to science. It is a really remarkable thing to study. Sally Nichols, in her book, Jung and Tarot, An Archetypal Journey, this is Samuel Weiser, 1980, first paperback edition was 1984, in the discussion of the temperance card. This is on page 249 and 250 in her book. Temperance, the Heavenly Alchemist. Temperance shows an angel pouring water from two jugs back and forth, except the water is at an extremely odd angle. It's almost at a 45 degree angle. Very odd. Your eye immediately is struck by the incongruence of this. This card traditionally symbolizes the dissolution of old forms and the loosening of rigid bonds, heralding a liberation from the world of phenomena. Now immediately you think of the Prologate Price Book of Moses. Worlds come and worlds go. Moses is shown the grand cosmic vision. Abraham, in his ascent in the apocalypse of Abraham, is shown the various worlds. Hugh Nibley, in his book on the Timely and Timeless, uh, in one of his chapters, discusses the dissolution, the dismembering of the older worlds, and how Melchizedek is the one in charge of putting the worlds back together. Could this temperance angel be in the Melchizedek tradition of the early Christians? I would propose yes, definitely. The angel temperance blends two opposite aspects or essences, producing life-giving energy. Now, compare this with Lehi's discourse in The Opposition of All Things. If this opposition were not, then life would be impossible. The Book of Mormon elaborates on that. This could be a graphic picture form of that Book of Mormon teaching, without question, to these spiritually-minded medieval European peoples. Well, whether we think of the red and the blue opposites, she's painted red and blue in the Marseille tarot deck. She intermingles as symbolizing spirit and flesh, masculine and feminine, yang and yin, conscious and unconscious, or whether their interaction is thought of as the marriage of Christ and Sophia, or the union of fire and water. It makes little difference, for all of these are implied. This reminds you of the Kabbalistic Zoharic explication of the letter Aleph. The Hebrew letter Aleph is a union of spirit and matter as well, especially elaborated on in the Zohar. Well, the liquid which flows between the two jars is neither red nor blue, but is pure white. This suggests that it represents a pure essence, perhaps energy. On page 251, she says, There are powers operating in the universe and in yourself which are beyond your everyday experience. Trust these deeper currents of life. Let yourself flow with them. On page 252, The reconciliation of the opposites is not a matter of logic and reason. Generations of men have struggled, struggled to reconcile the search for meaning exemplified in religion and the search for fact embodied in science to no avail. The supposed dichotomy between these two basic urges in men cannot be reconciled through the intellect. Like all opposites, they cannot be resolved by logic. Uh, this is pure quantum. Quantum physics cannot be reconciled by logic, as I'm going to show you. Uh, this is spot on. They only come together at the point of experience. The act of observation is how the quantum physics notes it. Page 253. The liquid in the angel's urns seems to spring by its own vitality from some inexhaustible source. Like the mythical waters of the miraculous pitcher, the pattern of the liquid's trajectory can be seen as a lemniscuit opened out. Now, the lemniscuit is the mathematical symbol for infinity. So, see, we're in the world of the eternities here. 
The closed lemniscate, which appears as the magician's hat in the first major arcana tarot card trump, suggests the unitary system of primal creative energy before the separation of the opposites, the motion of the tail-biting Ouroboros. A very powerful symbol on the outside of the Aztec calendar ring. This is also represented... It's not represented, but it could be on our Egyptian hypocephalus in the book of Abraham. That that rim represents the eternal eons. Well, in this temperance card, the lemniscate has unfolded so that the opposites are now separated and clearly defined as two vases, with the precious liquid being transferred from the higher to the lower container, generating a new kind of energy. This is precisely what the quantum physics displays. There is a new kind of reality that we're being shown by nature in the most odd, shocking, astonishing ways. And I will hopefully get to that. On page 254, she notes, The symbolism of temperance is more impersonal and abstract than the symbolism of the chariot tarot card. This offers us a view of the situation from the aspect of eternity. The temperance card does. Now we have the different position from eternity. The laws are different here. This puts us in touch with the Aquarian realm of pure unitary knowledge which exists behind our world of appearances. The quantum physicists have noted that behind the pure realm of matter is conscience. Consciousness is the realm of being. Matter is secondary. I'll get to that. Well, this is exactly what this tarot card symbolism is also showing. Very remarkable here. Here, energy, formerly experienced as two separate beasts, is now revealed to be one vital current. Very significant for quantum physics there. The symbolism. Now, in the amazing book, the Meditations on the Tarot, A Journey into Christian Hermeticism. It's by Valentin Tomberg, although it was published anonymously. This is the Element Edition, Element Books, published in the USA in 1991. On the Temperance Card, page 373, it says, This angel is presiding over the accomplishment of a strange act. Boy, that fits quantum. Where he is pouring colorless water from one vase into another, or rather he is making it gush almost horizontally between the two vases at an angle of about 45 degrees, the vases being held at a considerable distance from one another. An intellectual shock, and therefore an arcanum. Now the word arcanum here means mystery. This is not witchcraft or Satan worship and all that garbage and gobbledygook. No, the New Age voodoo junk. Get rid of that in your minds. This is pure eternal symbolism manifest through earthly metaphor. The tarot cards. Powerfully so. This is something which one has to take hold of and apprehend beyond the usual pale of experience and thought. What is the message of the angel with two wings in the red and blue robe, holding two vases, one red and one blue, and making water gush in a mysterious way from one vase to the other? Is he not the one who bears the good news that beyond the duality of either or, there is, or is possible, still that of not only, but also or of both and. This is beautiful quantum physics. Does not the totality of the card, the angel of the card, suggest the problem of cooperating polarity or integrated duality? Thus the idea which is presented first of all to the mind in the presence of the card of the 